Howdy folks, it's RJ Helms here with Capitalism Lab. This is possibly going to be a new series. Um, and Capitalism Lab, just for a bit of background, is a successor to uh, the Capitalism series of games, Capitalism 1 and Capitalism Plus and Capitalism 2. It's basically Capitalism 2 uh, with some new features remade to run on modern operating systems. I'll talk a bit more about that in a moment once we get the game started. Uh, so for this I'm just going to go through the scenario missions, basically the campaign, um, starting with the beginnings. This is this fashion venture level. So let's just get started. Um, I already got my things chosen here, so just RJ Helms. Go with RJ Helms. My portrait is this guy looking kind of like Freddie Mercury. Uh, I do want to choose a better logo. There's a ton in this. None of them are great. Let's see. Yeah, I like the one with gears. Okay, let's go with that and get started. And so in this scenario, and a couple other ones, you have to wait for a while. You can't actually start building until 1995, so I'm just going to look that fast forward. Um, and while we're doing that, I can talk a bit about what this game is. So the Capitalism series is kind of, in my opinion, the first and the foremost of the um, of the business simulator genre. Kind of the most hardcore in a lot of ways, which we'll hopefully see. Um, the first one came out in 1995, uh, and there was Capitalism Plus, I think, in 1996 which was the first game that I saw in the series, and then Capitalism 2 followed in 2001. Um, this particular version, Capitalism Lab, like I say, it's basically Capitalism 2 with a bunch of new features. It runs a lot better on um, operating systems newer than Windows XP. Um, it does lack the multiplayer, but I never was able to find anybody to play multiplayer, and it's actually pretty affordable. Um, it sells for $20 right now on the website, which I'll link in the description. Um, and that includes a bunch of other games by the same developer. I know it includes Restaurant Empire and a couple others that I've never played, but it's a pretty good value. Um, and this game is still in active development. Um, the patch that I'm playing right now was released actually in 2015. And there's a beta version as well, which you can download, uh, which is still in active development with new features that are going to eventually be, you know, ported back to the, the main version in kind of a rolling release fashion. Uh, but this game is, like I say, it's kind of the be-all and end-all of business simulations. It's kind of breathtaking the level of detail here, um, which we'll see as we get into it. And just kind of wait, like I said, till 1995. Um, but basically the idea is that you are running a large corporation. And so in a different scenario, you'll have different goals. Um, in this one, for example, I'm trying to create a, uh, a fashion empire. So I've got these sub-goals for now. So my first goal, of course, is just to have... 10 million dollars a year of operating profit with 100 million dollars of revenue once i've met that i already know in this, this scenario at least the goals are going to be to increase my revenue and profit um and achieve dominance of the um the brands under the fashion sense so it's going to be apparel first and then i believe leather goods uh, and then on from there so let's get started now that the time is over so i need to um start building a business with the goal of staking out a good claim in the uh, fashion industry. So we'll get started. We can look at what is in those categories and how we build those products. So I know that apparel is going to be my first goal just because I kind of peeked ahead in the scenario. Up next is going to be leather goods. And then finally, I, I don't, don't know if there's anything after that, actually. So I can look here at what I need to build these things. So it's blazers, leather jackets, jeans, and sweaters. So I need wool, dye stuff, textiles, and leather and linen to make any of those goods. So for now, um, I could get into producing those things. You can eventually dominate an entire supply chain all the way from, um, you know, mining for iron and drilling for oil through to retail of advanced electronic goods. It's pretty breathtaking in the scope. But for now, I'm just going to try to get right into the um, end products. I think my real money is going to be in the manufacture and retail of those actual goods. So let's see if we have those things already on the market. So leather. There's a bunch of leather I can see. There's three places that make it. So one of my competitors in the AI start is producing leather. As is another. Actually, no, it's all competitors' leather. And then, if I look at textiles, there's a seaport importing textiles, which lets me produce leather jackets. And then, uh, is there dye stuff around? Yes, there's someone producing it, so that's great. And is there linen? No, there is not linen. And is there wool? Yes, there's a seaport importing wool. 
So I'm in a pretty good position to start, probably in Paris, based on where these goods are. So let's start with the, the leather jacket. So I'm going to build a factory. Um, choose a large factory, just because I know I'm going to want to be dominating the market in the long term. And I should be able to actually just choose from the built-in layouts. Oh, it's just L, leather jacket. And so I can see here it requires leather and textiles. And so every one of your buildings is made from these nine tile layouts. So here I've got three purchasing units, purchasing leather and textiles, four manufacturing units, each of which takes one of each of those goods, and then they feed into sales units. So that'll be perfect. This should link up. It'll try to find the best suppliers. Um, since I don't produce these goods, that's fine. Um, if I was producing leather and textiles, I might want to tweak where it's getting them from, but it's pretty good at finding the best suppliers for the time being. So I've got those textiles. There's actually already a lot of people buying them, which is interesting because they're not good in any way. And one thing I'm going to want to do as well before I get started is go to my corporation and change my brand strategy. I'm going to want to go for a range brand, and that means that all of the apparel has the same brand name, um, all of the leather goods will have the same brand name. If I chose unique brand, what well, it says here, unique brand each product would have its own brand and the advertising would be independent and then corporate brand would be one big name for everything so kind of like Yamaha is the corporate brand for example or Sony are perfect examples of corporate brands but I think the range brand is the best because they um there's trade-offs here of course with a unique brand a bad product doesn't affect people's um opinion of a good product and the consumers are kind of indifferent as far as your diversified range, if you go for a corporate range and make things all over the place, like if you make cigarettes and cars, that will hurt you because um, it'll hurt your brand loyalty because it's how could one company be good at both of those things. Um, but for now, I've got that leather jacket factory. It's going to actually be turning a profit pretty quickly, um, but we'll see. So now I need to build a place to sell it. If I go to my land value chart, I can see in here is probably the highest land value. We'll do an apparel store. Okay, and here we go. So I've got a customer traffic index of 57, which is great. Um, it'll tell me here as well that as because I've chosen a specific type of store, as I build more types of that store in the same city, I'll get a chain popularity bonus. Um, and for now, I'm going to sell my leather jackets. I'm also going to sell this competitor's jeans just to bring in some more revenue. And I'll build an advertising unit. If you advertise my leather jacket, and thus my whole apparel brand range. I'm going to tweak my prices because you can see here um, my leather jackets. There are local competitors with an overall quality of 25. I only have a quality of 15, and that's probably because my jackets are too expensive. So let's bring the price down, try to stake a bit more aggressive of a market position, and we'll do the same with these jeans, which don't actually look very good, but that's not a problem because in the long run I'm going to be selling jeans as well. I'm going to make another unit to sell my leather jackets, because my sales units are the ones that are taxed here. Yeah, you can see after that initial spike of demand when they first came on the market, things have leveled off quite a bit. All these stores have an inventory, so they're not going to be... Yeah, see, they're buying one leather jacket a month. I'm going to lower my price just to stake out a better market position. I actually probably even sell a third leather, third place on leather jackets here. I'm doing that because um, for each of these units, you've got your... Um, this is the level of the unit, this is the stock, and then this is supply and demand, and then this is the utilization. And then same for the purchasing units. So you can see here I'm not able to meet the demand, not because of a lack of supply at the purchase units, but rather because my sales units are totally taxed. And so, um, best way to do that, or there's many ways, one way would be to actually do some training, which I'm going to want to do on these units. The other way is just to add more units um, to increase the utilization of my supply. Alright, so it looks like I'm in the black now, um, on a month-to-month -month basis. This factory is bigger than it needs to be for now, but that's going to change as time goes on. So let's stake out another product and just get 
get going. So we've got... Well, I'm selling jeans, so I could just hop right into competition for jeans. Um, there was no linen available, so it's jeans or sweaters. Uh, let's do jeans. Well, another large factory to make jeans. I don't have enough money, so I'll take out a loan. What's the one I want to hit for that? I don't remember the keyboard shortcut. Let's just take out a $60 million loan. Build another large factory to produce jeans. Once again, this should link up everything automatically. Wonderful. And so to start, I'm just gonna ditch the competitor's jeans and start carrying my own. I'll link those up to the advertising unit as well. You can see here those are already way too expensive. Oh, I did not want to click that button. cut my price at the factory. That also, for now, while I don't have my retail operation as big as is needed to support this factory, I do want to get competitors, uh, retail competitors also carrying my products, and so low prices will help with that. So keep bringing these prices down, and I mean a lot of the, the retail game is just tweaking your prices like this. So I can see here I've got the exact same thing happening with my jeans now. Um, my limitation is actually here the, the retail, not the supply, so I'm going to switch to have it be two and two. Um, in the long run, since there's four apparel products, each of these apparel stores is only going to have one purchasing and sales unit combination for each product that it makes. And since I have excess capacity, um, in both of these factories, maybe I'll just right away stake out a claim in a new city. I mean, to win, I'm going to need multiple stores in every city, so I might as well stake out the broad claim. Um, so I'll go for someone with a high wage rate. Looks like Miami is the next best choice. Let's find a good place for an apparel store, kind of right downtown. Oh, that's great. 63. That's probably my best location. So only me and from every city. And we'll start with jeans and leather jackets. Link up the advertising unit. And go over the one with the lowest cost per thousand. Um, that is basically just my strategy for how to choose a, um, a media station. I mean, higher ratings are good, but I mean, the cost here is per thousand people you reach, so that's exactly what you want. And I've got to pretty aggressively slash my prices to take out a claim in this market. Do another pass at tweaking my prices. And I mean, this is kind of like a loss leader. As I get a brand identity, these prices will have a chance to rise quite a bit. In the long run, I'm probably gonna actually need more factories than what I have built here, but we'll get there when we get there. Um, I'm not sure where I wanna to go to next. I'm still at a bit of a cash crunch. I could borrow more money or issue shares, but I'm not sure I wanna do either of those things just yet. So let's up the speed to five. So I can see here I already want more jeans for sale in the Miami store. And more leather jackets as well. So let's look at my brands here. So I can see I've got the range brand, I've got brand awareness of 21 and brand loyalty of 
something 20 and brand loyalty of minus one. So my brand rating is 19. What that means is that people are well, aware of my brand, but my products aren't very good, which is why they don't like them. You can see here my quality of my leather jackets is 23. My quality of my jeans is 30. But what am I manufacturing it? You can see here it's because it's a split between production quality and raw material quality, and both of those are pretty poor. This is DUI change from the version I'm used to. Um, so my technology in this is only 18, which or 17 out of 100, which is why my production quality is 8 of 50. My raw material quality, I mean, that I would expect to rise um, as these leather producers train their units and all well, the textiles, someone will have to manufacture them here. So I'm going to get going with some R&D centers. Borrow some more money to do this. I don't have each of these. I'm going to research all of the products that I've got expertise in. That's the blazers, jeans, leather jackets. I wanted these all to be two years. I'm going to terminate you and make you be two years just right away. I'm going to do the same thing in a new factory. So that's going to be for the sweaters. And I'm also going to put in some longer term research on textiles and dye stuff. So I suspect in the long run I will get into those markets as well. And that should improve my quality in the long term, and that will also help, of course, my um, my brand loyalty, which is really what I'm trying to play for there. Oh, so I'm actually just right about at demand for my leather jackets. Nowhere near it for my jeans. This place needs some training as well. I'm going to put a small training budget on these R&D centers. You don't want to spend too much money because they are just cash sinks, but it will pay for itself very much so in the long term. So this factory is well above its capacity, but it looks like that's actually because of a leather shortage. For the supplier, let's see if I can find a better supplier. Of leather. The Miami Seaport is a quality of 61. Actually, these guys seem great. That. These units here, they've got a higher quality and they're not totally slammed with demand. So that should help my production rise, but I also really do want training here. Go through all these guys once more. I'm getting squeezed out by someone. Someone's jacking up their prices of their raw materials. Probably the seaport. So that's why I'm doing my research to be able to produce my own uh, my own textiles in the long term. Okay, so maybe we want to diversify into sweaters now. There's a seaport tell selling wool, so that's great. We'll build another factory. A large factory. I want to borrow some more money to do this. a large factory making sweaters. Set up the links automatically, please. That'll be the dye stuff. Same as I'm getting internally and the wool from the seaport. Looks like there's no demand squeeze here. All right, and then let's go to our retail stores and put the sweater in. 
So for leather jackets, the squeeze is in the supply at this point, so I'm gonna carry sweaters instead. Do the same thing here. Carry my sweaters, please. My supply of textiles is stopped. Well, the party had to end sometime. Okay, well, let's just position our sweaters on the market, and then we'll deal with that, because that's going to be a big problem. Okay, so, supply of textiles has stopped. There's no one supplying them in the world. What about cotton? Yes, in Warsaw, the seaport supplies cotton with a huge demand. So, is really no one making textiles, or did someone start? Okay, yes, someone did start. And they're slammed with demand, but for now. Go to my jeans factory. Um, I don't know how I ended up there. Go to my jeans factory. I can... Oh, it was automatically linked up. Okay, and I'm... Even though that's slammed with demand, it's not my bottleneck here. So I'm in good shape. That could have been a big problem. What is going on with my leather jacket production? Is it just a bunch of clients? Yeah, it seems like it's just a bunch of clients. Okay, so I've got my training on. Oh, I'll raise my prices a bit. I've got to keep ahead of the cost of production. There's no point in selling jeans at a loss. And it's because it seems like of this textiles manufacturer. So when my textiles manufacturer, textiles research finishes, I could probably stay, go to really good claim in that market. Kind of as a secondary industry. So there's one more product to get into, which is the Blazers, so let's start building that chain. I'll go back to my manufacturer's guide. For a Blazer, it is dye stuff, textiles, and linen. Does anybody in the world make linen? No. Okay, so I'll make linen. So I need flax fiber. Does anyone in the world make flax fiber? Yes, someone does. Okay. So I'm going to build a linen factory. I don't have any research in linen, but that's fine. And you found our supplier, so we'll have linen on the market very soon. Perfect. And that's in Miami, but my manufacturing I'm going to keep all in Paris. I'm like another large factory I need more money for. Oh, wrong button. There we go. And you will make blazers. I'm just going to want to make sure that this links up with my own supply of linen, which it has. Perfect. As you come on the market pretty soon. Beautiful. And now I'll go to my retail stores. And I'll get blazers on the market. So I'll remove the last doubling up here, which is going to be this one. And same thing here, it will be jeans as well. You can be blazers. And each of you can have the four advertising units just to absolutely slam the brand. Let's go through, just keep doing a pass through our retail here. So my 
demand for jeans is growing pretty consistently, but I'm making a loss just because the price of textiles keeps rising. Which is no problem. We can deal with that in the future. Alright, bring my price of linen down. I kind of want to pick up other suppliers or other customers, but like I say, it's not my core business, so it's fine if it's just sitting there losing a little bit of money. Let's bring this price down until I've got an overall score of, say, 50? If I can find a better advertiser. No, it's... Oh, yeah, there we go. The radio is even cheaper. One last pass of tweaking these prices, and that's as good a place as any to stop. So we've got our um, our basic supply chain staked out. We are producing all four of the goods that we need to um, have complete dominance of the apparel sector. So I'm certain we are far from dominance of it. Yes, far from dominance of it. We can see of the four categories, and some of them were in second place, some of them were in third place. So the next step is going to be to try to meet these intermediary goals here, of which we're about halfway, um, and then also grow our manufacturing and retail arms into all of the cities in the world um, to really aggressively stake out a dominant claim in the apparel industry. Uh, once that's done, we can move on to other goals that we'll get. The goals basically, as you expect, um, are continuing ramp up of revenue and profit and also a, um, eventually, like I said, some other sectors will be expected to take stake out of claim in, but we'll deal with those when we get there. Um, for now, it's just still on and on with the dominating of the apparel market. So we'll deal with that more in another episode. Uh, let me know, leave a comment below if you like this series and you do want to see more of it, or if there's anything else you'd rather see. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more in general, and I'll see you next time. Thanks so much.